Sa dami-daming options sa PC building, gusto mo lang ba may magsabi sa'yo, ito gawin mo? In 15 seconds, ito gawin mo. PSU, not Corsair, Mobo, not Oros, CPU, AMD, GPU, not AMD, AIO, no, RGB, heck no, wireless, everything wireless, except for one thing. But if you need to have cables, get them custom. Hey, personal click that thumbnail. If you're into computer hardware, there's definitely one thing you can't avoid. Alam mo, sa totoo lang, walang alam yung shop na yan. Saan mo ba nahanap yan? Oh, nakita ko sila kasi sa YouTube. Nahanap mo sa YouTube? Ba't ka tumitingin sa YouTube? Other people's opinion. This video is my way of saying I don't give a hoot. <laughs> but these are my personal choices. Starting with my choice where I got my Windows activation key. Sawa ka na ba sa unactivated windows mo? Well, lucky you! Pinakabago mula sa cdkeyoffer.com Windows 10 and Windows 11 activation codes. Legit, safe, at pinakamura. Madali lang umorder. Hanapin ang Windows version na gusto mo. Piliin ang preferred payment method. Wala pang 5 minutes, may cdkey ka na para sa windows mo. Marami na kaming natulungan. Dati... Sudden depressed ako. But now, I found the love of my life. Dati, aimless and walang purpose ang life ko. But now, I'm a world-class Zumba instructor. So, web developer ako and content creator for a YouTube channel. And ngayon, ganun pa rin ako pero activated na yung Windows ko. Kaya ako naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software. Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Okay, first up, in no particular order, I really like wireless. If there's an option to remove a wire, I will take it. So my personal preference is that my mouse always needs to be wireless. Currently, my keyboard is wired, but the keyboards I've been trying out lately, particularly from ASUS, have convinced me that my concerns about latency, about lag, are unfounded. And my keyboard is pretty old now, so probably maybe in a year or two, I will get a wireless one. My headset is also wireless, and if you're getting a headset, I would seriously advise you to make sure it's wireless. Time to cut the cord. Anything that can go wireless, I generally try to make it wireless. Next up, a big one in the PC space, to RGB or not to RGB, that is always the question. But as you can see behind me, I am a no RGB kind of guy. Yes, the GPU has a little RGB, it came with the GPU, I don't particularly care about it either way. I've never tried to customize it. The motherboard has some lights, the cooler I'm using has a little bit of light. But overall, I've never done the RGB aesthetic. I made no effort to kind of synchronize the lights of my PC behind me. And don't get me wrong, RGB can be cool, but it gets old fast. And personally, I've noticed the RGB setups that I like are the ones that don't use all of the colors. You can set them to a monochromatic, let's say all white or all blue, or just like a dual color scheme. So using or getting more with less. Where the PC looks cool, but because of the edges of its parts, because you know that it's running good hardware, because you know it's running optimized. Like you got the latest drivers, you made sure you kind of tweaked a little bit the settings of the RAM and the CPU and the GPU. It looks good because you know it's running well under the hood. So for me, not an RGB guy. But if you like RGB, that's no problem. RGB is of course just for aesthetics and I think an underappreciated aesthetic touch is getting custom cables. A while back, Cable Mod sent us, like not just me, but basically everybody in the shop, the option to have custom cables. And the one I chose was for my rig. And you can choose them, like the individual strands of the MOBO and GPU power connectors. So I chose like a gray, blue, purple kind of scheme, and they still look very good. And for me, they're a subtle but clear sign that pinag-isipan mo yung computer mo. Hindi pang karaniwan yung custom cables. Now, you don't necessarily need to go full customization like the ones from Cable Mod. There are a lot of cable extenders that are colored. So if you just want all white for your wires or like a crisscrossing blue-black, blue-red design or things like that, there are options available. 
Next choice, which a lot of people have different opinions about, is whether you're a water bender or an air bender, or are you using air cooling or are you using an AIO? Now, I've tried both, and longtime viewers will remember how successful my mounting of a 360mm rad AIO on my current case was. And if I may say so, that was a brilliant design choice on my part. So, hanggang dito si GPU, obviously the tama siya sa radiator. That's why in inangat ko siya. And even though, so yung consequence nun, <laughs> lampas, na, <laughs> lampas na sa KC radiator. But that's okay, it'll do its job. But I have had different AIOs, 240, 360, different models, different brands on my computer. But I'm liking my current look the best. I'm using a Deepcool AK620 digital. I love the digital. I love the concept that you can just take a quick glance and see basic information without having to pull up a window, without having to click anything. Just turn your eyes and the information is there. Now you can have that with an AIO of course, again with the digital line from Deepcool and other models from other brands. But for the aesthetic of my computer, I think bagay yung AK620 digital. It's you know, kind of like a skyscraper sprouting rising dramatically from the motherboard. And this is really subjective. AIOs have gotten to the point where they're not that much more difficult than an air cooler. Mounting a rad is pretty straightforward. Mounting the fans onto the rad, mounting the CPU block, it's basically as straightforward as mounting an air cooler. Maintenance also, there is no appreciable practical difference. You don't add water to an AIO. Some people do ask us about it. That's why I'm mentioning it in the video. That water, that, that fluid inside the AIO is already self-contained. You don't need to add anything. So the maintenance is just like an air cooler. So you brush out the dirt that gets trapped in the radiator. The same way that you would brush out the dirt that gets trapped in the tower of an air cooler. An AIO from a good brand doesn't leak. I guess point of failure, there is a higher chance of an AIO pump breaking compared to the fans of an air cooler breaking. And if they do break, they're much easier to replace. But again, on a practical level, we haven't seen a higher RMA rate for AIOs compared to air coolers. So this is a purely subjective opinion. I, I guess I'm just old school and I still prefer an air cooler if there's nothing like super special about an AIO that would attract me to it. And on performance, it's not true that you need an AIO for the latest and the greatest or to keep very hot CPUs cool. I'm currently running a Ryzen 9 5900X with a two tower air cooler and I hadn't had any problems. Speaking of CPUs, the age-old debate, whether Team Blue or Team Red, I will admit to being a little Team Red. I like patronizing the underdog and in CPUs. I know they're, they're kind of similar already, but you know, AMD was an underdog for such a long time that I still associate them with that position. I really appreciate that they developed the heck out of Ryzen. I mean, AM4 was such a golden age. You could get Ryzen 1000 AM4 and then technically just upgrade the CPU all the way up to the Ryzen 5000. It would, it would probably still be compatible with that motherboard. I mean, the AM4 ecosystem was, you know, it, it has so much value. It still has a lot of value now. So I really appreciate AMD for that. Unlike Intel, which likes changing up its sockets every two or three generations. Performance nowadays, they're sort of neck and neck with AM5 prices around the same as the Intel 14th gen. AMD was nicer before because, you know, they were a clear price to performance advantage, but now not so much. So I admit that a lot of the reasons why I like AMD are in the past. They're not currently true anymore, at least for AM5 versus Intel 14th gen. But that's not true for GPUs. For GPUs, I prefer NVIDIA. I appreciate the performance and the innovations that NVIDIA is trying to bring to the space, whether that is AI upscaling, the whole RTX thing in general. I mean, NVIDIA is really the leader AMD just tries to follow. And perhaps unfairly, because I know their drivers are better now, but I was really traumatized as someone who owns Hardware Sugar back in the day with the 5000 series cards no AMD. Sobrang gulo no mga yan. The drivers were not great, so we had customers coming back to us complaining how come their games are crashing. And it's very hard to tell a customer that, you know, we're sorry, there's nothing we can do. 
the hardware seems to be fine. It's just that, yeah, the drivers are crap. And if the drivers are crap, there's nothing we can do. So I'm still traumatized by that. In general, NVIDIA drivers are still more stable. And NVIDIA really tries to swing for the home run. I mean, you know, the 4090 is still top dog. AMD has nothing that can touch the 4090. Its latest 7900 XTX is more in comparison to the 4080, the one-step down card, and it has nothing that can currently touch the 4090. So I don't have the budget for a 4090. I have never bought the 90 series, the pinaka top end. But I appreciate that NVIDIA is trying to push the space. For PSU, I had a Corsair for a long time. It died on me, but I appreciated that I was able to use it for multiple generations. So Corsair is a good brand, but actually there are a lot of other brands now that are cheaper and have the same good quality. I'm currently using an FSP. We've had good experience with deep cool PSUs in the shop. Seasonic is another brand that usually comes to mind for PSUs. Okay naman sila. Superflower is still underrated, still a bit under the radar. But our shop experience with them has also been very good. So there are a lot of good PSU brands that you don't need to pay the premium prices like for Corsair, but you're still getting very good quality. I feel like the PSU is one of the things that people like to overcomplicate. I mean, there are the PSU tier lists. They have to look at specific models. For me, that's a level of OC that I don't really want to expend on a black box. As long as it's stable, as long as it's reliable, that's all I really need. An 80 plus gold fully modular PSU from the likes of Deepcool or FSP, Superflower, buy it, stick it into your computer, forget about it, it will last longer than that computer. And the last topic for this video is another confession I have that I don't really pour over the reviews too much for my own personal build is the motherboard. Generally, I've had good experience with Gigabyte stretching back to my previous Intel build. So for this current build, I just got an X570S Ultra Durable from Gigabyte. Gigabyte in general, okay naman siya for motherboards. Like, I'm not unhappy with it. For sure, the other brands are quality as well. MSI, ASUS, we've sold a lot of them in the shop generally without any problems. But personally, I just prefer Gigabyte because Ultra Durable does seem to mean ultra durable, at least in my own personal experience. Now, a lot of people delve into VRM temperatures and how many chokes and how many layers. And when I review motherboards, I do find all of that stuff kind of interesting. But as an end user, a lot of the time, as long as you get a good quality board, doesn't necessarily need to be top of the line, but you know, three fourths <laughs> towards the top of the line. Don't scrimp naman, but yeah, get a good quality board and the build takes care of itself. Yeah, I haven't had any problems with this particular build. I never had any problems over the years with my previous Intel build that also had a Gigabyte Ultra Durable. And that's not even the top of the line of Gigabyte. I mean, they have the Oro sub-brand for that. I do admit some of the newer motherboards now from other manufacturers look a bit cooler. Like, in particular, Asus always has these little nice touches which only like real enthusiasts who have to get their hands dirty, installing things into the motherboard, mounting it into the case will actually appreciate. But I appreciate that they're there. So to be honest, this was a very stream of consciousness video. I just set out the topics I wanted to talk about, but I had no script for what I said about those topics. If there are any other things like you want to know about my build, what I think about brands, just feel free to ask in the comments and maybe I'll do a follow-up video. On your end, person who clicked that thumbnail, I hope you're happy with your PC choices or you're happy with the choices that someone else made for you when you went to the shop and asked them, hey, I need a build for gaming. I don't know too much. Can you help me? If you got it from Hardware Sugar, I'm almost like, I want to say 100%, but nothing is ever 100%. If you got it from Hardware Sugar, I'm 99% sure that you're happy with the parts we chose for you because we really try as much as possible not to use our opinions, but to get the opinion of the user on what they will be using the PC for, what their budget is, and what we can work with for that budget na quality, na maasahan, na hindi ka kakabahan sa computer na binili mo galing sa amin. Thanks for watching. Paminsan, may nagtatanong kung may kilala ba kaming computer shop na trusted, yung hindi ka lolokohin. Actually, meron. Kami. Full service PC store ang Hardware Sugar. Nagbabenta kami ng PC components. 
Nagbebenta rin kami ng fully assembled rigs. We clean computers. Kasama na rin yung excellent cable management namin and CPU cooler repasting sa cleaning. We also clean and repaste GPUs. Nasa Makati yung physical store namin and you can also buy from our site www.hwsugar.ph na 100% palaging up to date yung inventory dun. Kung in stock yung item sa amin, available yun sa site. We also ship nationwide. Thanks for watching and maybe one of these days magkita tayo sa shop.